All right, good Thursday morning, everyone. It is time to talk about the markets with Jim Kramer on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. And Jim, let's just start off with your temperature of the markets. We're pulling back a little bit from record highs. I think that what's happened is, it, it, I, it, I'd like to almost call it exhaustion, but we've had a very big move, and part of the move was because North Korea hadn't been saying anything. Sure enough, that pop-off said some very nasty things last night about putting J uh, Japan into the under the water. I, amazing that this guy isn't uh, isolated by everybody, but the Chinese prop him up. Uh, so that hurt the market, and we take our cue off of Europe now, and Europe was down. And then the other thing that I, I see that I think is confusing people is, okay, so what's really going on with rates? Uh, interest rates have been going up, and as soon as you see rates going up, people just want to sell a lot of stocks, buy some others. Just the only ones they really want to buy are the banks. I come back um, to some broader themes I'm going to outline in today's club call which are longer lasting than this dribble that I'm seeing right now. I think today uh, we're back in a world of, of Europe, we're back in the world of North Korea. Uh, we thought that there might be some good cooperation between Democrats and Republicans, and maybe something will get done, all dispelled this morning in a couple of tweets by the president. So um, this is all noise. The action earlier in the week is more telling. So that's what I'm going to be talking about on the club call. Well, could it be better timing for that club Thank call you. today at 1130? Thank you. We hope everyone tunes in. Yeah, you really have to. I mean, I spend so much time on it. It's really important. Uh, Jeff Marks, is this, uh, Zev, who works with me, Zev Fuma. And what we try to do is put together, um, in, in, it's introspective. I give you my outlook, but then I talk to you about like you know, the new stocks that we reckon, uh, rec have been recommending and, and flesh those out. But also I talk about uh, uh, mistakes mm. and things that I'm concerned about. And I think that it's a different kind of call than you'd ever get if you were in a mutual fund or a hedge fund. Yes, and watching these videos or your tweets, it's just you, people need more. Yes, they do, and I'm going to give it to them, and I do it in a very personal fashion, the only place I do it like that. All right, we look forward to it. Jim, let's move on to news of the day. Uh, Tenet Healthcare reportedly exploring a sale. You know, what did you well, think? I just think this is a heavily indebted company. It's under pressure from an uh, investor, and uh, it's not a property that necessarily anyone wants to get. There are some properties within it that are attractive, mm -hmm. but they tend to be the ones that if you sold them off, you'd be left with a kind of a something you really don't want. So uh, they can explore all they want. This one, I just don't see the natural buyer. Any broader thoughts on hospital stocks in general? I just have always liked the HCA. But my favorite in this sector, uh, uh, healthcare, the, uh, the two I have, UNH has been in the bull mm. bullpen for action orders forever. It's never come down. And then Centene. Mm. I've liked Nidorf. I, 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 I was supposed to interview him yesterday. He got stuck on the tarmac. <laughs> But uh, CNC is going much higher. Hmm. Okay, meanwhile, the Equifax CEO is set to testify before Congress. Yeah, he has to resign. He should be fired. I mean, honestly, what does it take in America? I mean, this is a trusted company, and someone obviously at the top has to you know, take the fall. He's blaming, fault. He's blaming server software. I mean, we all know. I mean, what firm should have more security than Equifax? Right. And you should be able to stop uh, a, a breach of soft of server software. Uh, you talk to Chuck Robbins about that. Uh, talk to uh, Mark McLaughlin at uh, Palo Alto about that. Um, it, it, talk to Udi McCarty at CyberArk about that. Uh, uh, and I think uh, talk to Proofpoint. Um, uh, I talked to uh, Symantec. I mean, I think you'd find that this was something that could have been stopped. I'm just thinking about parallels between this and John Stump from last year. You interviewed him. Well, Stump, you, you know, he came forward, tried to come clean, but blamed others. Mm. Uh, that was wrong. Um, here, everything's been bungled. You know, what to tell people, what not to tell people. Obviously, they um, they were not forthcoming in the way that we would expect after the way Home Depot handled their breach. And there isn't anything that they've done right. Hmm. And, and because of that, it, it's time to relieve the CEO. Now, you know, when I say that, one of the things that I think people have to recognize, I, I, I've been fired. Uh, it, it's part of life, okay? Uh, I was fired for something I, I didn't think I did. Um, there are two times in my career that uh, one time I was fired, one time I quit before I was going to be fired. And, and in both cases, it, you know, look, it, there's stigma to it, absolutely. Um, but you know what? And mine was very public, my firing. Uh, uh, but that's life. It, it, it's part of it. You pick yourself up and you go and you do something else and uh, stay strong and put your pants on in the morning and go forward and just put that tie on, go to work. Um, it, 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 it is something that has to happen when you make mistakes. Now, I didn't make, you know, to me, mine was ended up being litigated and I was found to be okay, but I just think that I don't understand why this guy doesn't get fired. I just don't get it. You've got some people on the board who should know better. Totally. Well, I mean, I, I'm going to call out all these board members. I mean, they don't like to be known. 
uh, individually, they are. It's horrible when they hear their names. Siri Marshall hears his name on TV. Uh, but you know what? That's what has to happen. They have to step up. These are people, the former CEO of Citrix is on that board. Well, we spoke at our corporate governor conference with the previous CEO, another previous CEO of Citrix, and they were positioning themselves as the ultimate cybersecurity company. It was a cybersecurity panel. Well, how can this man, a cybersecurity CEO, not say, look, this is too serious. I think he was on the board in part because of his cybersecurity experience. So I'm perplexed. Well, we know the CEO is going to face a grilling on Capitol Hill. Well, it's you know this is just unacceptable to me. Now, it may be acceptable to everybody else. They have all this data that they have about you, but it's unacceptable to me. And again, who am I to do it? Look, I'm someone who's been in, in business life for many, many years. And for me not to say it because I'm afraid of retribution or something, I don't play for dinner. No. <laughs> All right, we'll continue to watch that one. Jim, meanwhile, Tesla unveiling a semi-truck supposedly in October. You know, it's funny. I had uh, uh, Brad Jacobs on last night from XPO Logistics. Yes. He's a terrific CEO, and I asked him exactly about this. And I thought it was preposterous that you could be driving on the road and look over and see a semi, and there's no driver. And he said it's not preposterous at all. As a matter of fact, he expects it. Now, this is uh, the CEO of one of the largest trucking companies in the world. So I guess it's certainly possible. Schneider, when I had Schneider on, they thought, well, you know what? That was the one who first told me, wait a second. You're going to look over and see someone with no driver. I mean, so Schneider was much more skeptical. But Brad is a—he spends four hundred million dollars on technology. He knows a lot about trucking, certainly a lot more than I do. Uh, I've never—I've driven a truck once. I drove a Mack truck once. It was quite high, quite hard to do the shifting. Cool. But I do think that uh, you know. Uh, if Jacobs thinks it's a reality, it could be a reality, then I think it could be a reality. Well, there's so much hype. Anything Tesla. Didn't your daughter put a deposit for one yeah, of the cars? Yeah, we gave up because it took too long. She huh. graduated from college, and what I did is I promised her if she got a job when she graduated that I would... Um, I would uh, give her down payment for a car, and she'd have to pay for the rest. Turned out the insurance was really sky high, but she really? did that. Yeah, it, it, you know, and she kind of it ate up a lot of her what she was paid. Uh, but she had her job. She had her job for a year, and the job was terminated. And she's uh, looking if anyone wants to know. She's right now on vacation. But uh, yeah, we, she wanted a Tesla, um, and she gave up waiting because she got the job, and she needed a, a car to drive for job. Huh. Look at that. All right, Jim, also Amazon is, can potentially add two and a half million Prime members off of Whole Foods. I thought Foods. that was an excellent piece of research. Sometimes you see this piece of research and say, wow, that's well thought. They really spent a lot of time uh, doing some work and pondering, particularly because Prime's pretty secretive. I urge people to read this Morgan Stanley piece. Sometimes I'm tough on analysts, sometimes I'm not. But this was a piece which basically said it's going to be a virtuous circle, good for Whole Foods and good for Amazon. I am waiting for who's going to come in to announce to run, run Whole Foods. I got my fingers crossed that it'll be Walter Robb, mm -hmm. whom I think was a great executive and should never have left the company. Um, this Morgan Stanley note, do you expect renewed sort of pressure on some of the other grocery stocks? Well, I just think that, you know, I happen to like uh, Rodney McMullen. I happen to love the guy who runs Kroger. He's mm -hmm. a really terrific guy. Uh, you know, Kroger is a classic great operator. I love going to Fred Meyer with my daughter in Oregon. But you know what? I mean, this is a shot across the bow against Kroger. And also, Walmart's the largest grocer. They obviously want to compete against Walmart. Target has, a, I mean, I was in the Walmart grocery store. I was going to print, I was going to put some of the pictures up because they have so much that is bad for you at the Walmart uh, food section. But then I said, you know what? They're a customer driven company. And so clearly people want that, and they're not in the business of training people how to eat better. But my wife, my wife was appalled about how you know you go through aisle after aisle of like uh, Debbie cupcakes, a Hostess. I mean, there's like it, it, you, you felt fat after you walked through it. <laughs> sort of the opposite of Whole Foods. Exactly. Have, have you been post Amazon? No, I've not. I should go. Um, I, I like Whole Foods very much. I have a fabulous Whole Foods in Brooklyn that I really like. They have a beer garden up top. It's one of the most successful stores. It was on the it's on the Gowanus part where they kind of cleaned up. I always think that if the president, previous president, hadn't declared the Gowanus a, a super fun site, uh, the Toll Brothers and a couple of others hopefully would have made it clean. And believe it or not, I live two blocks from it. Believe it or not, I think Gowanus could have been a little like Venice. I'm not kidding. Now, if you go, it looks kind of like a bubbling, toxic waste site. Oh, God, well, we don't like that. No, but boy, <laughs> it would have been so good. That, that store is fantastic. Yeah.
All right. Jim, let's end with NFL ratings falling 13% amid all those storms. David Faber talking. I think that wasn't so bad given Florida and Texas. Um, David Faber, we talked to, yep. to Les Moonves. I talked to Les yesterday. I, I am a big believer still in the NFL. Um, I really want to applaud Tony Romo for doing what I really wanted all the time in the booth, which is be predictive of plays. Romo's a great guy. I met Romo a couple years ago. I know he's a cowboy, so people say, what, are you crazy? I met Romo a couple years ago at the White House Correspondents' Dinner, and he said, listen, I know you're an Eagle fan. I'm going to win you over one day to be a cowboy fan. And I said, that's just inconceivable. Next year I go, I see him, and he comes up to me. He says, hey, Jim, I'd love to talk to you, but I really want to talk to Lisa my wife he said you know lisa is it really it must be so difficult for him on sundays because the eagles lose some i bet you he's a beast and she said oh my god who are you she said, oh, my name's tony romo she says oh you're my tony romo. my my husband did i he hates you because he goes i don't know why he hates me but i just want to say that you're certainly his better half and I, it, he walks away a and my wife says that's one of the greatest guys I have ever met. He wasn't interested in talking to you. He was interested <laughs> in talking to me. He gave me the kind of thing I always hope one day, it's not like throw a camera at me, take a picture of uh, your husband. A and I've loved him ever since, and I've been in communication with him. And uh, he's a great guy. And I knew he was going to be fabulous in the booth. I knew it. And um, he is one of those guys like Madden. I think he can change the way we watch football. So I'm very hopeful. Now, there's a lot of ways to watch football. Mm -hmm. Amazon covers football. I, I don't know if the ratings are true. And I know Les Moonves has a very good rap about total ratings. Les is a visionary. Mm -hmm. I, was in a, uh, I was in a fantasy football league with Les in 1989. His team was called Les's Jets. And uh, he was very good. He, he is a really fine man. I like Les. If you want to know more about Les Moonves, go to uh, Bucknell, comma, Moonves commencement speech. He gave the commencement speech at Bucknell, and I thought it was brilliant. It was really about life and how to be successful. It was a brilliant, brilliant speech. You got to go watch it. Right, I'm going to look that up, but Jim, you seem fired up for week two of fantasy football. Yeah, no, I've made a lot of improvements in my squad. I just lost by a couple points last week. Now, a lot of it was I was distracted. I went to the Washington Redskins game. I did something you should never do. I knew that Cousins was going to be there for the Skins, uh, and I played him, and he got me .9. That was a killer. I played that Viking D, which is highly overrated, particularly against a guy like Breeze. So I've made some switches. I've got the Eagles as my D. I think that's going to be great. Um, I picked up a better uh, tight end, but most importantly what matters is that Russell Wilson was my quarterback he only got me nine points in Green Bay but he's going back to the friendly confines in Seattle with the 12th man I think he goes off this weekend I'm counting on it go ski daddy skis yeah, ski daddies <laughs> the ski daddies could rock this weekend all right Jim Kramer yeah, we'll leave it there thank you so much and be sure to tune in to that Action Alerts Plus call that's at 11:30 today you.